there's a hundred ways you can flip a beam. Y'all said that why not just flip it with an overhead crane or maybe a forklift. So that's what we're going to show you right now. So as we start to come around, that I-beam will start to twist and turn. And if you don't have the proper operator where it could drop, put a, too much of a load on the crane. There's a lot of multiple factors that can happen here. It's very unsafe. If you get in a rush and you're not paying attention to those things, more cause for error. Yep. We really don't have control of this no more. It's just going on itself right here. Gravity has more control of it. Yeah. So that's a flop right there. That's where you're statically loading the crane. If you ask me, seeing what the beam chant's capable of, that was still slower than watching that beam champ rotate. Yeah, it's slower, more dangerous. Takes about five minutes at least to get this all hooked up to get it flipped over. Yeah. Beam chap, we've seen it, it only takes about less than a minute to set a beam in there. The other comment was forklift flipping. I think that's a little sketchier. This is some sketchy business. You have no control over it. You can get it up, but you just pray it just stays upright. Well, once we get it up and we start flipping it, gravity takes over. It gets real sketchy, real dangerous real quick. Let's see it flip. The beam's gonna win all the time. There's one. We have to get it to the other side. Gotta flip it one more again. It's gonna go. Yeah, I don't think we have to explain why that's unsafe. Yeah, unsafe, a lot of risk factor in there. So traditionally speaking, this is how you'll load a beam here with the beam champ. Less than a minute to come right. in, come out. He's gonna come in, load it in. There's no one in the way, there's no injury, anything like that. And you could overhead crane it in too if you wanted, but there's still more swinging involved yeah, with, with the crane. Yeah, with an overhead crane, you have that swing effect, you can hit somebody. Not the only that these can fit in your shop, but you can actually take them and they're kind of more or less mobile. You could put them on a truck. Yeah, they're portable. Um, if we had bigger beams, longer portable. beams, <laughs> we could actually move them out, spread them out. Once the combo lift's out of the way, you can start closing yep. up, making sure the chains are all right, right? It'll kind of pick it up a little bit. You could rotate it but in any position you want. Do you need any certain like certification or anything to operate this type of stuff? No, it's basic training. You come in, you learn how to use the remote, kind of get a feel for it. Really simple, really user friendly. And we're rolling. We're just flipping simple. beams now. Yeah, simple. And all that. we've been doing is just chatting. Yes, sir. I hadn't had to pull a muscle, break a two by four. Right. I hadn't had to hear loud noises. You still got your stuff. toes intact. Still got my toes intact. Bring up these uh, saw horses right here. They come up. I don't weld position. structural beams much. I've always done it in a pipe. Still the same argument. It's like, oh, welded in position. I would much rather roll it. It's more efficient, keeps the welder happy, and that's what it really takes. If you're doing this all day, every day, beam champ's not gonna hurt.